मेरा नाम चिमन सिंह है यही यही घर हमारे घर में हम दोनों पत्नी पत्नी हैं दो लड़के हैं दो बहु हैं मैं नौ साल की थी जब शादी हुआ था थी जैसे जैसे भाई जैसे घर में परिवार की है जैसे ही बहन जैसे समझ के मुझे बड़ा किया और जब हम बड़ी हुई जब से मेरा समझ के शादी शुदा है हम पति पत्नी है जब ये हमारा अब भारत में तो बदलाव तो बहुत आए हैं बहुत विकास हो रहा है जिनको हो रहा है उनको तो गाड़ियाँ बढ़ गई पहले लोगों के पास साइकिल थी और साइकिल तो गायब हो गई ये स्कूटर हो गए गाड़ियाँ हो गई तो विकास तो बहुत हो रहा है लेकिन वो भी एक बड़ी बात है मतलब सच्चाई का नहीं सच्चाई का आदमी कर नहीं सकता India, the world's second most populous country and seventh biggest landmass. It's also one of the globe's fastest expanding economies. But with rapid change comes profound challenges and unique 21st century solutions. Today we explore India's growth and growing pains, an urban-rural divide, and a headfirst dive into digitization. From the heights of Mumbai to the forgotten tribal lands, this is the crossroads India. Let's go inside. India may be a little late to the growth party, but it's poised to catch up quickly. Following a series of economic crises in the 1980s, India began to open its economy in 1991. Cutting red tape and relaxing restrictions, the country's GDP began to grow. India grew 7% in 2014, 8% in 2015, and 7% in 2016. This economic liberalization led to a rise in the middle class, a middle class which earlier had been about 8% of the country, is now a third of the country. And if you add the aspiring middle class, you have almost two-thirds of the country. For some, growing the economic pie is an important first step before deciding how that pie will be split up. If you don't have growth, how on earth are you going to have bring people up into gainful employment? You not, can't even redistribute income which you don't have, right? If you have growth, you manage to directly pull people up into gainful employment. But in a country of 1.3 billion people, has it been growth for all? We go to the cities, we see all the big buildings, good roads, beautiful street lights and all these things and we're like, wow, development has happened. But they know in the villages we won't get the food for the day. As India emerges as a global leader in growth, just what is holding it from reaching its full potential? Uh, my name is Dinesh Dubey and I am 46 years old and I have, when I was two years old, my father migrated from UP and brought me to this city and in this city my father brought me to Dharavi, one of the largest slum in the world and I am proud that I am being brought, born and brought up in Dharavi. In the year 1970 or 75 or 80, on that time, the people who migrated due to poverty, since they come to Mumbai to get more opportunities, the only place where poor people stay is slum, and the slum is Dharavi. India has historically been a primarily rural society. 
it is now rapidly urbanizing. The process has its benefits. Legacy issues of caste and gender, for example, have less truck in the city. But at the same time, rapid unplanned internal migration has overwhelmed cities. In big cities, their whole lives are illegal. There's no space to live. So if your house is illegal, your electricity connection is illegal, your water is illegal, uh, you are illegal. From education to jobs to social inclusion, urban and rural India are facing familiar, if different, challenges. Ganesh and his wife Reshma are raising three young girls in Dharavi, the largest so-called slum in Asia. My name is Ganesh. I'm from Chile, I'm from Tilunga. My father came here when I was a child. My father came here when I was a child. It's necessary to study in this world. It's necessary to study in this world. We don't have to study in this world. We don't have to study in this world. We don't have to study in this world. हस्बैंड वाइफ अच्छा पढ़ा नहीं क्या करके सोचा वो भी नहीं पढ़ा मैं भी नहीं पढ़ा तो बच्चे लोग तो आगे जाके अच्छा पढ़ने क्या करके हम लोग Every morning Ganesh walks his daughters to school. अभी मैं तो नौकरी करके प्राइवेट में डाला हूँ दो लड़की को और तीसरी लड़की को प्ले ग्रुप में डाला हूँ बहुत ज़रूरी है मेरे को तो लड़का नहीं है तो मैं उसको लड़का समझ के पाल रहा हूँ कि उसको आगे का फ्यूचर बताता हूँ कि आगे का फ्यूचर उनको दिखाना है कि कि आगे हम तो कुछ किया नहीं है आप लोग को बहुत कुछ करना है But getting a quality education in densely populated areas is not so easy. I visited a low-cost private school in Dharavi. 90% of the students from here are from very low economic background where the parents uh, earn like uh, some 10,000 per month. That's the, like, the minimum amount. The problem is that they learn in the school whatever they can learn, but once they step out of the school, there is no platform for them to learn that because they don't have laptops, they don't have internet, they don't have computers. So whatever they are learning in the school, that is the amount they can learn. Back in rural Rajasthan, most youngsters attend local government-run schools. While far from perfect, education opportunities have certainly improved in rural India. Just ask Nirmala's mother-in-law. पैसे लाए तो सरकारी में अच्छा मास्टर है तो पढ़ा सकते हैं तो अच्छा अच्छा ही है सरकारी स्कूल हमारे लिए तो The government schools have about half of India's children, Rajasthan's children. They are the poorer half. They are from Dalit communities. Girls go to government schools, and the reason parents are putting their children in private schools, even though it costs a lot. is because they feel that that's the only way that they can maybe have a chance later. Their family has a chance, uh, all that. So now education has become a big business. It's inequality cemented in the modern world. The day I visited Nitin's school, one of the two teachers did not show up. As a result, the other teacher had to tend to a larger class with a very wide age range. This frustrates Nitin's grandfather. Well, 
बाकी वो मुझे आप नहीं समझाओगे कि ये ऐसा हो गया ऐसा हो गया वो दिखा दिखावा क्या है बाकी वो मैडम पढ़ा नहीं भाई वो उनको तनख्वाह मिले क्या मतलब पढ़ो या मत करो पर्याप्त तो कहाँ है अभी तो फैसिलिटी पूरी नहीं मिलती तो मेरे स्कूल में जा, जाने का रास्ता भी नहीं है तो पहाड़ी पे जाने के लिए तो आप देख आप आओ तो एक बार देखो कैसे कंडीशन है जो भी है तो थोड़े बहुत पढ़ पढ़ लिख जाते हैं छोटे मोटे और बम्बई सूरत इधर अहमदाबाद वगैरह चले जाते हैं वहाँ काम करते हैं बाकी खेती करते हैं वहीं पर लोकल ज़्यादा खुश नहीं India's caste system can heavily influence education and labor opportunities, as well as social and economic mobility. It is the most illogical form of social organization, but it's become so prevalent that it has its own logic. And you cannot escape it. Even if highly educated people, if they belong to the upper caste, they have this casteist mentality. And they go and come among these communities of bheel kal bheel they will not teach them because they have in the mentality that this community does not want to study they are meant to do menial work their blood is meant only to do menial work caste barriers may gradually be crumbling but the institution still has a strong effect on economic mobility for a case in point i visited a safe house in delhi for couples in hiding they wanted to marry for love outside of caste or religion and had been rejected by their families. Do your parents know you're here? Uh, right now, I don't think so, no. They just know you're gone. Yeah, they suddenly we have gone. We have gone, but they don't know where exactly we are. We both fallen in love like for the last three years. It was all good with my family side, but when it came to them, uh, uh, things got a little bitter. Uh, they gave more importance to ready caste. And they wanted to, uh, s uh, they wanted to stop us getting married, and they don't want us to be together just because I'm not a ready. Sanjay Shweta maintains the safe house. If we believe media reports, there are huge bounding bounties on our heads by these fundamentalist councils, clan councils, caste councils, religious councils. The other couple, that is inter-religious couple. They can be killed any time, anywhere. The family, the society does not approve of the relationship. I'm Muslim. Yeah, Hindu. Or Hindu. Possible नहीं है कि काश दोनों same हो सके. दोनों मानेंगे ऐसा तो हो हो गया ही नहीं लगता है. बहुत सारे ऐसे केसे देख चुके हैं. Did you think that your family might do harm to him? Definitely. What were they threatening? They were threatening to do this honor killing for the woman. They were telling that uh, she will be killed if she gets married to me. And they threatened me like that. When it comes to his, her father, he has done his masters. If that person thinks like that, what about the whole society? What about the people in the village? Why? If a person like that becomes a leader, how people will follow him? In rural India, lack of employment opportunity and a fickle agricultural season have historically led to extreme poverty and mass urban migration. So in 2006, the government implemented the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, or NREGA. The government program guarantees 100 days of work for rural households per year at a pay rate of around $3 a day. On average, about 50 million families access the program annually. This is all Milton. First, what do you do? First, we work in the field. In the field, there is a lot of rain. The second field is the field. Yes, we go to our own field. So, our Chaiman helps support his family working in Narega. But he has already used up his 100 days of work this year. I don't know. 
घर ही रहता हूँ कोई छोटा मोटा काम कर लेता हूँ बकरियाँ चला लेता हूँ वो तो है ही मैं कई बार कुछ धंधा भी करना चाहता हूँ लेकिन मेरा माँ बोलती है कि इसमें कोई अपने कोई दम नहीं है मणि नहीं है ऐसे नहीं है तो धंधा कैसे कर Especially in rural India, traditional gender roles have prevented women from fully participating in the economy. How old were you when you got married? Seventeen years. Seventeen years. And how did you meet your husband? कैसे मिले आप भैया से? नहीं मिला शादी किया उसके बाद एक साल बाद. I think Indian women have not been part of our economic story at all. I mean, on a scale of one to ten, we are not even at one on that. Um, the problem is actually in the mentality, um, the way people function. So let's say we are twenty-three year old women, and uh, part of our families have started thinking, "Oh my God, you're so old. You need to get married." It's like you know, your life goal is to get married in India. Okay. Then there are certain men who think that she's not supposed to get a job. She's supposed to sit at home and. If we come from a middle upper middle class family, then uh, it's kind of easier on us mm. because uh, our parents can afford to make their own choices, and people will not judge them. Mm. But when you come from a smaller home, then people judge you all because it's a community that lives together. It's not a family decision or an individual's decision. It's the community's decision of rights and wrongs and yes and noes. There is no grey. Would you like to work again someday? Chate pan beste nahi. Meanwhile, in urban India, it's a daily hustle to make ends meet. See, there are many job op opportunities in itself in Dharavi. Like 50% of people who stay in Dharavi, they get the job in Dharavi because in Dharavi we have uh, uh, recycling, we have garment, uh, we have jeans. Every second structure, you find some business, some initiative, some created employment. Everything under the sun, including my air. and my teeth that means air and bone is also recycled here yeah. a tremendous amount of urban labor is informal in india off the books and irregular for ganesh that can mean days without work at a time kaam nahi kare ghar pe ho contract bole to contract ghar veer ka contract deta hai ho usme ja ke kaam karta hu jaisa helper mein kaam karta hu saal mein jaisa abhi wo jo dhoop ka season hai और अपना ठंडी का सीजन में ये काम मेरे को मिलता है फिर बरसात में चार महीना मेरे को घर पे बैठना पड़ता है मैं गुस्सा तो लगता नहीं है टाइम वेस्ट होता घर के पास रहके मेरा इधर घूमना उधर घूमना कोई वेस्ट हो जाता है फिर सोचता हूँ फिर काम पे नहीं हूँ बस सो यस द डे यू अर्न यू अर्न मच मोर देन यू वर्न इन रूरल एरिया बट यू डोंट अर्न कंसिस्टेंटली you on a few days a month you have illness your children are unable to go to a proper school so that urbanization is completely unplanned and it is putting a huge burden on cities so what can india do to make sure everyone has access to growth the country is betting heavily that the answer lies in technology can digital tools hack these challenges Over the last 20 years, digital technology has spread like wildfire in India. Over 1 billion SIM cards have been issued for an estimated 700 to 800 million phone users. Between 300 and 400 million smartphones have been activated in India. Cities like Bangalore and Mumbai have become global hotspots. But instead of over-regulating the industry, the Modi government has doubled down on digital. betting heavily that faster connections will lead to faster development 
Chief among the government's initiatives is an effort to create a biometric identification system for its 1.3 billion citizens, or as it's known in India. The Aadhaar. 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 The Aadhaar National ID. This is a program that you spearheaded That's and right. it transformed India. It's a biometric identity system. It's called the Aadhaar system. We're very proud of it. Uh, 1.08 billion Indians are on it. Almost 99% of the adult population are on it. That's the fundamental um, uh, layer of our transformation of uh, the government rebooting that I talk about. I traveled to India's tech capital, Bangalore, to speak with Shankar Marwala, one of the major minds behind Aadhaar. The idea was that the government of India spends a lot of money in social welfare programs, tens of billions of dollars, and a lot of that does not reach the intended beneficiary. So the starting point was how do we ensure that welfare and social benefits reach those whom it is intended to reach. Once registered in Aadhaar, Indians have the foundation to set up bank accounts, enroll in health care, or directly receive government benefits. India did not have a strong birth registry system. Half of India is not registered for birth, uh, at, at birth. So that actually means that there is no root document in this system that can prove who you are. So Aadhaar took a very new approach to say we will use the biometrics of the individual to actually stake their own identity claim. India is digitizing rapidly, but this raises the critical question of access. If India goes pedal to the metal on digital, and if the digitization is not inclusive, some people could be left even further behind. In well-connected places like Bangalore, the tech community offers significant opportunities and upward mobility. But what about the poorer parts of urban India? Back in Dharavi, I found an encouraging level of digital penetration, especially among younger residents. Yeah, see, to be very frank, one, uh, India is one of the cheapest, uh, cheapest cost in telecommunication. Internet is also a very cheapest thing for, uh, for us. People cannot afford iPhone, but they can afford a China phone, you know. I mean, we need to know anything about it. So, we will search on Google Chrome on the direct net, so we will get the direct answer. They can't be excluded because this is a city within the city. This government can't afford to lose these people. So digitalization has to come to the people. Economy has to be come to the people. So the no government can afford to lose this kind of a crowd, this kind of population. But in rural India, digital progress has not been so clear cut. आपको इंटरनेट चलाना आता है? नहीं, कुछ नहीं, नहीं जी। Would you like to learn how to use the internet? आप सीखना चाहोगे? हाँ, सिखाओगे तो सीख लेंगे। वो तो दिमाग में आ जाएगा तो फिर सीख लेंगे। वो बस गीत आता है समझ लीजिए। अब देखो सर, वो अब तो ऑनलाइन कहीं साब इंटर ले वो नहीं ले वो तो भी चल रहा है। अब मालूम अपने आज का पेपर में पढ़ा के वो रेलवे के टिकट भी लेने के लिए अपने को ऑनलाइन बना वो करना पड़े आधार कार्ड क्या जरूरी है उसमें भी आप बटी डाली रहे बेटा ये तो अपने अपने जानते नहीं हैं वो ऑनलाइन कैसे हो रही है By tying benefits to online profiles, Day feels rural folks could be even further disenfranchised. The poorest of the poor are supposed to get five kilos of wheat every month at two rupees a kilo. Now there are 10 million households in the state who are supposed to get that. Out of that, after having made it mandatory, after having put in a kind of a roadblock that you will not get it unless your biometric is authenticated, 30% of the selected beneficiaries are unable to get their rations. Three million households. That's again 12 million people. That's a huge number of the poorest people excluded because of this. But there is a larger debate at play. Those in favor of India's technological push believe it can help the country leapfrog forward in development. But in the forgotten corners of India, 
digital is the last thing on people's minds. India has a lot to be optimistic about, but its development challenges are daunting. They extend well beyond the alleyways of Dadavi, beyond the traffic of Mumbai, beyond the sprawl of mid-sized cities, and beyond even the rural towns and villages so tied in to the country's identity. As India leaps into a 21st century digital economy, it cannot lose track of those still living almost completely off the grid. A few hours outside of Nirmala and Chaiman's village, I visited tribal lands beneath the Pakistani border, and they weren't worried about Facebook. For them, the principal struggle is gaining legal titles to the lands they have lived on for decades, if not centuries. The land is currently administered by the government's forest department. The group applied for land rights, but their application was rejected. Today I'm moving with Paras Banjara, a colleague of Nikhil Day. We travel on to a regional meeting of the tribes, which has gathered to talk about rejected land applications. हमारे संगठन के मार्गपथ से हमने 900 और 98 98 हमने फोरम व्यक्तिगत हम दावे पेश करवाए थे इसमें वो पूरे बलों के हो गए उसमें 13 पंचायत है वो के पे आकर उसने सीधा यही रखा है कि कानून में इस पर लिखा हुआ है कि जिसका मकान है कुआं है और उसकी खेती है उनका ही अधिकार मिले हर काम की आवश्यकता होती है आवश्यकता होती है वो सरकार या नेता लोग वो कर्मचारी इस लोगों को Paras, the activist, has heard enough. The speech resonates, and the tribes agree to back a march scheduled for the next day. They will stage a peaceful sit-in in the regional capital Udaipur to demand a hearing for tribal request for land rights. The tribesmen arrive early the next day. There is an opportunity cost as they will miss a day of work, but they have a point to make. Nikhil Day, my contact in Miramar's village, is scheduled to speak at the protest. Late in the afternoon, the mayor finally agrees to speak with Nikhil, Paras, and other leaders. Meanwhile, the protesters wait and wait and sing and talk and wait. In the sweltering heat, a difficult decision emerges. The protesters do not want to leave empty-handed, but if they're to get back home this evening, they can't wait much longer, and many have no place to stay and cannot afford to miss another day of work. Finally, hours after entering, the team emerges from the mayor's office. Maybe digital technology can provide the solution after all. So today what came out of it? Today the divisional commissioner promised that they will put into place a management information system which people can also access to make sure they track all their applications for land. 
information should not be gathered just for someone in government or a bureaucrat, but should be made available so that people can track their own stuff and their own interaction with government. That is That digital platform has not been built for the Forest Rights Act, which is a shame. They will build that in one month. And that is a way where the digital world can actually help people. Even in a country as dynamic as India, progress still moves slowly, and sometimes not at all. As the country seeks to maintain strong growth momentum, it must find a way to keep 1.3 billion people on the same page. Until then, India remains at the crossroads.